Denise Gwynn reading aloud for you from my short story, The Greasy Spoon, Chapter 36. Nick longed to ask her who Lupe was to her, then decided against it. Where do the hogs go after the cage? Nick asked, nodding at the contraption that he and Ed had just escaped from. There is a chute, she said, pointing into the dark abyss. And once the animal die, it float, it drop, it float, and she pantomimed the gesture of the machinery that the hogs fell into once they'd been gassed by rolling her arms in a circle and gazing at him with a questioning look as if she didn't quite believe she'd explained it clearly, what happened to the hogs once they were dead. But he understood her meaning. Once the hogs were gassed to death, the cage floor dropped them down into another cauldron of horrors. He nodded, comprende. See, si. and in the next chamber, the hog body is rolled around like in a dryer for the clothing. She gazed at him. Yes, like a clothes dryer. Yes, and the dryer scrape the hair from the body. I see, Nick said and shuddered. Ed struggled up to a seated position. You better, Nick asked. Why haven't they come after us yet? I don't know. Are you ready to move? Ed pulled his knees up to his chest and wrapped his arms around them. I'm going to have to be. Okay. I don't know how much longer I'll be alive, but for the present moment, I'm still here. Hey, Nick said, cocking his head. Did you hear that? No, what? Ed asked. The shower room was silent. Not a sound. He glanced at the girl and nodded at the closed shower door, and she gazed back at Nick with her big, wide brown eyes. There is antiseptic in the shower, I think, she said to him. She wasn't sure, and Nick nodded. Acid? Nick asked. See, acid. What for? Ed asked. It is the best way to get them clean, they say. It sanitizes them. Why are they so quiet, though? Nick asked softly. When this machine break, and she gestured to the Ferris wheel, they kill the animal in the shower instead by changing to a gas. She looked at the Ferris wheel machine. This machine, it does break down from time to time, a lot, Nick asked. Yes. Ed rolled over onto his hands and knees and struggled to his feet. How do we get out of here? She didn't speak. She pointed to the boxes. She came in from behind these boxes over there, Nick said. There's an exit and she locked it from the inside. I don't know that for sure, but I'm pretty certain she did. This girl is smart. Oh, okay. And while you were unconscious, she locked the door into the factory as well so Jeb Jr. can't get back in. That's good thinking, Ed said. Is that our only way out? I think so, Nick said, looking to the girl. Okay then, Ed said, let's go. Nick nodded. I lost my knife, Ed said mournfully. I know, but maybe we'll find more weapons as we go, Nick said. He grabbed a cattle prod, leaned up in the corner and turned on the switch. Nothing. A dead battery. 
Oh, well, he said, at least I've got this. Okay, Ed said. Nick went first, followed by the girl, then Ed. They edged past the boxes and Nick thought he'd never seen a more welcome sign in his life. In big, red, bold letters, exit.